Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. When his pet snail is captured and sentenced to a life of forced labor, SpongeBob and Patrick abandon Bikini Bottom to challenge the King of the Seas. Today we will recap the story of the 2020 movie, the SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run. In the sea of the tropics, a place of incomparable beauty, there are islands that shelter a rich ecosystem of coral reefs. In this underwater metropolis the organisms live in perfect harmony. It is at the edge of this reef that a small town called Bikini Bottom is located. This conglomerate is home to different species of crustaceans, starfish, octopuses, various types of plankton, a squirrel who believes she is a scientist, and a sea sponge who lives happily with her beloved pet snail. Every morning, SpongeBob wakes up covered in Gary's goo. Although he finds this situation a bit disgusting, he has to admit that the goo is strangely soothing. As he gets out of bed, SpongeBob opens his pineapple window to say good morning to his best friend, Patrick. Among them is the home of Squidward, an octopus with the spirit of a bitter old man of 90, who cannot stand the animation and enthusiasm of these two young people. Before going to work, SpongeBob eats his breakfast next to Gary and then takes the snail for a walk. Together they go for a bike ride, do yoga, surf, rollerblade, and even participate in talent shows. Of all the creatures that inhabit that vast ocean, Gary is the one SpongeBob loves the most. The only time they are not together is when Square Pants goes to work. SpongeBob works in Mr. Krabs' restaurant making Krabby Patties. And his neighbor, Squidward, is the cashier. Even during work the octopus can't get any peace, and one of his greatest wishes is to live in a world without SpongeBob. Square Pants loves his job and begins his workday with great enthusiasm. Soon after, Mr. Krabs appears and orders him to raise the restaurant's flags. Strategically, they turn on the chimney and the divine smell of Krabby Patties spreads throughout the bikini bottom. In a few minutes, dozens of sea creatures appear, and nothing can make the crustacean happier than to see his restaurant full of customers, because this means more money in his pocket. However, his biggest rival, Plankton, the owner of the Chum Bucket restaurant, is always on the lookout for an opportunity to steal the Krabby Patty formula. This time, the little guy has formulated his evil plan number 3087 and believes that this time he will finally be able to take possession of the secret formula. However, Karen, his computer wife, is convinced that he will never be able to accomplish his mission and says that the wall of failure is already running out of space. Plankton claims that every time he tries to steal the formula, Mr. Krabs shows up to stop him, but Karen says that it is SpongeBob who is always there to protect the secret formula. Upon hearing this, Plankton decides to ignore his wife and remains convinced that Mr. Krabs is the problem. Meanwhile, at the Krusty Krab, SpongeBob is working hard in the kitchen to get all the orders delivered. In addition to being the hatter who prepares the hamburgers, he also happily serves the food to the customers. Suddenly, Sandy arrives at the restaurant with a large wooden box. The squirrel tells him that in the future everything will be automated and she intends to offer her new technology to Mr. Krabs. When he realizes that he may be replaced by a robot, SpongeBob goes into despair, but that doesn't stop Sandy from making her offer. She introduces Otto, the automated restaurant owner, to Mr. Krabs. Upon discovering that the robot doesn't need a salary, Mr. Krabs becomes interested, especially when he discovers that that machine is a cold and feelingless being, just like him. Minutes later, Otto decides to fire Mr. Krabs and take over the restaurant. In that instant, the crustacean changes his mind and gets rid of that robot once and for all. Plankton realizes that something has been dumped in his trash and leaves home to investigate. Upon seeing the poor robot that has just been discarded, Karen decides to adopt him. At the end of the day, before leaving, Mr. Krabs orders SpongeBob to leave the kitchen sparkling. Since he loves his job, he doesn't bother to clean up before he leaves and, at the request of his boss, saves the only Krabby Patty left to be sold the next day. What he didn't realize was that Plankton was hiding in the pickle jar just waiting for the moment when the Krusty Krab is empty to steal the secret formula. After lifting the glass lid, the little guy manages to get close to the hamburger and decipher all its ingredients. When he finally gets his little hands on the formula, SpongeBob returns to the restaurant looking for his bunch of keys and accidentally knocks Plankton over. At that instant, the creature breaks away from the formula and runs through the kitchen in an attempt to retrieve it. Without realizing it, he lights the fryer on fire. Plankton ends up being crushed by the potato cutter and thrown into the pool of hot oil. After a few minutes of searching, SpongeBob discovers that the key was in his pocket the whole time and leaves. Then Plankton realizes that his wife was right when she said that the sea sponge is the big problem preventing him from getting the formula. Meanwhile, in his palace, King Poseidon, ruler of the seven seas, admires his beauty and youth, despite being 3,000 years old. Taking a closer look at his face, 
the merman notices that a small wrinkle is beginning to appear around his eyes and he despairs. He orders Chancellor to hand over his royal snail, because, according to Poseidon, that mollusk possesses rejuvenating power superior to any treatment. However, when he realizes that that snail no longer has any goo, the king discards it and orders the Chancellor to get another one. Just then, Poseidon discovers that the entire local snail population has been extinguished. Furious, he orders Chancellor to write a new decree, in which he guarantees a reward to anyone who delivers a sea snail to the king. When he reads this decree, Plankton has a great evil idea. The crazy little guy decides to turn Gary over to Poseidon in order to get rid of SpongeBob, who will no doubt go out looking for his pet snail. That day, when he gets home, he soon realizes that something is wrong. Gary always appears when SpongeBob opens the door, but this time it was different. SquarePants searches for his friend all over the house, until he comes to the conclusion that he has run away. Sponge then spreads posters all over town, hoping to discover the whereabouts of the mollusk. SpongeBob and Gary have been a duo since childhood. They met when SpongeBob was eating a delicious hamburger on the banks of a waterfall. After sharing the food with the snail, they became great friends and were never separated again. When he finds the poster about Gary's disappearance, Patrick runs to talk to SpongeBob and ends up falling into the snail's sandbox. In this way, the starfish finds a note saying that Gary has been captured and taken to the lost city of Atlantic City. Immediately, SpongeBob goes to read recent news about the town and discovers that the place is ruled by a tyrant who has been known to eliminate his own subjects for fun. Upon reading all the barbarities about that dark place, SpongeBob goes into despair, because he is not brave enough to go there. So Patrick decides to support him and promises that he will embark on this journey alongside his best friend. All they need now is a way to get to Atlantic City. However, this problem is solved when Plankton and Otto show up. The villain says that the robot will be able to accompany them on their rescue mission and will drive them to the city. The next morning, the customers are furious that there's no Krabby Patty to eat. When he finds out that SpongeBob didn't go to work that day, Mr. Krabs orders Squidward to take over the role of the Hatter and go make the burgers. However, within the first few minutes of the octopus entering the kitchen, the griddle explodes and the ceiling is destroyed. Hungry, the customers attack Mr. Krabs and both are trapped. SpongeBob and Patrick take a nap during the long trip, and when they wake up, the pair realize that Otto has taken them to the surface. They arrive in an abandoned town in the middle of the desert and make a stop at the Inferno Saloon. When the two friends get out of the vehicle, Otto leaves. Then the pair is run over by a tumbleweed named Sage. The spirit guide claims to be there to help SpongeBob on his journey, but first he must accept a challenge. Sage spits out a coin and says that the object will give SquarePants courage whenever he needs it. The dry bush states that the challenge awaits him inside the bar and the pair quickly enter, not even knowing what the challenge is. Inside, the two friends are confused to see a piano playing by itself, but soon discover that the place is full of ghosts. The challenge is to free the souls of those zombie pirates. To do this, it is necessary to find out what is keeping them trapped on Earth. At that instant, a flash of lightning causes the sea creatures to despair and El Diablo, the head of that group of zombies, appears. Then the ghosts get together and start dancing. Among them, Snoop Dogg comes up with a song, and the two friends end up joining in the choreography. Just when the mood seemed to be more welcoming, El Diablo appears and orders his men to take the prisoners to his room. Trapped in a cage, SpongeBob and Patrick try to negotiate their freedom with the pirate, but end up almost being hit by his laser beam. In an attempt to protect himself from the attack, the sea sponge points his coin at El Diablo. At that instant, the man starts laughing and says that this is just a coin used for laundry machines. While trying to escape, the duo accidentally opens the curtain and luckily discovers El Diablo's greatest weakness, sunlight. In this way, they manage to get rid of the pirate, who ends up charred to death. Frightened by what has just happened and afraid of being discovered, the two friends run away and witness the souls of those zombies being freed. El Diablo was what held them on Earth, and SpongeBob was able to complete his mission by destroying it, with Patrick's help. When Otto returns, they get into the vehicle and prepare to continue their journey to Atlantic City. However, El Diablo's ashes unite, giving rise to a demonic monster with a thirst for revenge. The trio is chased for a few meters, but Otto speeds up the car and they manage to get rid of that monster. When they wake up again, SpongeBob and Patrick are back at the bottom of the sea and believe it was all just a dream. However, Sage is right there in front of them and assures them that what the pair just had was a vision. Sage allows the sea sponge to use his magic window to see what is happening to Gary in real time. At this point, SquarePants discovers that his friend is being used as skincare, and if his goo runs out, he will be forced to do forced labor, just like the other snails. In the bikini bottom, 
Plankton decides to pay a visit to Mr. Krabs to ask the crustacean to accept defeat and hand him the secret formula. Sad and hopeless, Mr. Krabs decides to comply with this request and delivers the formula to Plankton. Seeing his competitor feeling like a big loser, Plankton cannot feel victorious and believes he has lost the chance to get his revenge. Meanwhile, the trio arrives in the lost city of Atlantic City and Sage directs them not to allow themselves to fall prey to distractions. SpongeBob then assures him that he will never forget why he went there, because he loves Gary more than anything in the world. However, within minutes of arriving in the city, the two friends completely lose focus and are drawn to all the fun and delicious food the city has to offer. After having fun in the park, they enter a casino and start betting. Apparently, luck is on the side of the pair, who win a lot of money in the very first game. At this point, self-interested fish approach to take advantage of the two friends' money and enjoy the whole night at their expense. When the money runs out, the sycophants leave, but the party continues. The next morning, an octopus cleaner crosses town with his cleaning equipment and the pair wake up destroyed. Suddenly, Sage appears and claims that the pair have done the exact opposite of what he advised them. Right in front of them is the Palace of Poseidon, and Patrick uses a motorized scooter to climb the stairs. When they inform the receptionist that they are there to see the king, the fish kicks them out and the pair must find another way to get to Poseidon. They invade the Aqua Room, where the merman and his guests are. Now that they have invaded the stage, the inhabitants of the Bikini Bottom need to perform to entertain the audience. Just then, SpongeBob spots Gary being used as face cream and they both run towards him. The snail is extremely happy to see the sea sponge, but his joy soon comes to an end. SquarePants tries to explain to the king that Gary is his pet snail and intends to take him back home. However, Poseidon doesn't listen to this and orders the guards to arrest those two. At the Bikini Bottom, Sandy decides to pay her friend a visit and discovers that SpongeBob is not home. His pineapple is completely turned over, which is very strange since SpongeBob is extremely organized. Worried about her friend, the squirrel decides to go to the Krusty Krab and discovers that SpongeBob hasn't shown up for work in days. Mr. Krab says that he misses SquarePants a lot, and even Squidward shows some feeling for him. Just then, a news report catches their attention. The reporter reports that two suspects have been arrested after trying to steal the royal snail. The elimination of the suspects is scheduled to take place Friday night at the Aqua Hall to the sounds of Kelpie G and his clarinet. After watching the news, Sandy and Mr. Krabs are determined to go to Atlantic City to help them. However, before they can begin their journey, Plankton shows up and asks for permission to accompany them. Intending to attend Kelpie G's show, Squidward decides to join the team and everyone heads to the garage in search of the Krabby Patty's car. When everyone is ready, Sandy gets ready to leave and uses the ketchup and mustard tubes attached to the sides to increase the speed of the Krabby Patty's car. In the dungeon, SpongeBob and Patrick await the moment of their elimination. Although he knows he is on the verge of death, SpongeBob's greatest sadness is knowing that he will never see Gary again. His last hope is the coin he won from Sage, for it should give him the courage he needs to face difficult times. However, SpongeBob remembers that the night before, Patrick lost the coin in a bet and becomes furious. Patrick recalls that he only used the coin because SpongeBob insisted that he do so. Furious at the accusations he has suffered from his best friend, Patrick decides to abandon him and goes to another cell. Then, Sage appears and assures SpongeBob that that coin was just a symbol. The dry bush asserts that the courage he is looking for is within him. When the Sage leaves, Chancellor appears in the prison and orders the executioners to take the two friends to the execution hall. Along the way, Plankton decides to tell the whole truth and confesses that it was he who delivered Gary to Poseidon. Within hours, the group arrives in Atlantic City and storms the palace. Before they are eliminated, the two friends will go through a trial, in which Chancellor is the judge. Lamont will be the executioner of the sentence and Kelpie G has been invited to turn that tense moment into a smooth and pleasant event. Chancellor begins the trial with a string of charges and the pair are found guilty. Just as the two friends were about to be eliminated at Lamont's hands, Mr. Krabs turns out the lights in the hall and the Chancellor is captured along with the executioner. Sandy then takes the stage and, with the court's permission, begins her defense. In order to sensitize the jury, the squirrel tells the story of how she and Sponge Bob met. Many years ago, during a summer camp, Sponge was impressed to see Sandy using a jellyfish as a parachute. They introduce themselves and Square Pants is curious to know where that astronaut outfit came from. Squirrel then explains that the suit allows her to breathe underwater and SpongeBob asks if she is a scientist. Saddened, Sandy replies that she is just a squirrel and therefore cannot be a scientist. However, SpongeBob assures her that she can be anything she wants to be, and this gives her the courage she needs to follow her dream. After the rodent speech, 
The audience is already on SpongeBob's side and Patrick takes the opportunity to tell how he met his best friend. Patrick was just a sad and lonely little starfish when, at that same camp, SpongeBob approached him and offered to be his friend. Next, it is Squidward's turn to tell his story. The octopus also met the sponge at summer camp on the night of the talent show. Despite his terrible performance, the young mollusk was convinced that he would be the winner and believed he had put on a great show with his clarinet. However, he had a big surprise when he found out that SpongeBob and Patrick were the winners. Disappointed, Squidward spent the entire night crying in his room and decided he would never play his clarinet again. However, everything changed when he received a visit from SpongeBob and Patrick. The duo said that they talked to the members of the organization and found out that an error had happened in the counting of the votes. According to SpongeBob, the winner was actually Squidward, who is extremely happy to receive that trophy. He has since decided to go back to playing his clarinet. Therefore, Squidward states that although SpongeBob is extremely annoying and irritating, he loves him and considers him a great friend. Finally, Mr. Krabs tells how SpongeBob supported him when he was still a small hamburger vendor and encouraged him to open his own restaurant. During his speech, the crustacean takes the opportunity to merchandise the Krusty Krab and hands out discount coupons to the audience. Mr. Krabs ends by saying that the secret formula is much more than a list of ingredients, for his Krabby Patty would never be the same without SpongeBob's careful preparation. Then Plankton uses all his dancing skills to entertain the audience while the rest of the team rescues SpongeBob and Patrick. They come together to form a great musical show and take the opportunity to escape without the audience realizing their escape plan. Before leaving, they pass by Poseidon's throne and rescue Gary. However, the merman doesn't realize that the snail has been switched until the group has already left. The king orders his guards to arrest those traitors and Patrick decides to take a break to eat during the escape. His friend then pulls him back in and the entire team locks themselves in the war room. They hide inside a suit of armor and attack the guards who are chasing them. However, during the battle, they end up having an accident and the armor rolls off while knocking the guards out, like a bowling ball. During the crash, the team members take advantage of the distraction to get out of their armor and hide, except Squidward. The octopus continues the fight alone and is knocked over dozens of coals. Unluckily, Squidward trips and breaks the window glass, suffering a fall from several meters high. His friends rush to his aid, but are unable to stop the fall. Despite the serious accident, the octopus survives. At that moment, Otto appears to rescue them, but ends up speeding the car before his friends can get into the vehicle. With nowhere to run, the group ends up being surrounded by guards and Poseidon appears soon after. The Merman King says that he has not been so excited about a performance in a long time, and says that all the crimes those creatures have committed will be forgiven. All this on the condition that SpongeBob returns the snail to Poseidon. In that instant, he finds the courage he has been looking for and states that he will never leave Gary behind. Furious, the King intends to eliminate the sponge with his trident, but gives up when he realizes that he has no friend who would risk his life for him. Seeing Poseidon in tears, SpongeBob tries to console him and says that from now on he will be his friend. He says that more important than appearance is who a person is on the inside. Upon hearing this, the king feels relieved. Finally, he can assume his true self and pulls off his wig. He then reveals his sagging skin, says goodbye to his dentures and the belt that was used to hide his belly. Happy that he no longer feels the need to hide, Poseidon allows SpongeBob to take Gary back home. He then orders his subjects to release the snails he was holding as prisoners in the palace, and Gary convinces SpongeBob to take them all to the Bikini Bottom. Since then, the town has become home to the sea slugs and they have become the most beloved pets of the residents. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.